seconds. It's LeVac and Goss on 104.5 The Team. I, uh, I messed up my time. Uh, we actually uh, are lucky enough to be joined by the voice of the uh, Siena men's basketball team, A.J. Cannell, right now on 104.5 The Team. But before that, she is a, a woman of her word. Coach Jax has just brought me her bobblehead. Oh, my God. This is wow. going to go out front. This is going to go in front of Derek Jeter, I hope you know. This is... It's going to press Derek Jeter's place on the desk. We've got A.J. Cannell on the phone. That's I don't awesome. know if A.J. Cannell's ever had a bobblehead made by himself, but let's get into Siena men's basketball versus Monmouth last night. A.J., what happened last night? Why could the Saints not hang on to the victory? Uh, I guess that's the perpetual question, guys. I mean, they've been in a lot of games this year, especially recently. I mean, there were a couple ones that got ugly in non-conference play, but for the most part, that if you've been looking closely – it hasn't been the case in conference play. They've been in every game in conference play. They were leading 18-7 to early in the game in the first half. They had a one-point lead at halftime, but I just think it's a little bit of a lack of focus, attention to detail at certain parts of the game. You know, it's, it's just they, they piece certain stretches together, but they can't piece the full 40 minutes together, and that's, that's what we're all seeing. And there's something there, but they just have not quite gotten it uh, where they want it this year well AJ we had a chance to talk to uh, to a couple of the guys today uh, Tom Herter and and, uh, Jordan Horn they said it was they felt maybe it was a lack of somebody on the court who's been there before are you seeing that where it's just you know as these kids get experience you'll see some of these problems right themselves I think so I hope so I mean as uh, one of the assistants I think it might have been Jordan Watson was saying you don't just get older and then suddenly start to do that stuff magically either. It's not just going to click. It, it actually has to happen. So I, I hesitate to just – I've been trying to not use that storyline as much as we've gotten on later in the season, just talking about, okay, it's a, it's a young team, using that line of thinking. It's, it's still true, but I think the fans – I'm sure that the diehard fans are really at this point a little bit tired of hearing that. I mean, it's 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 not going to change this year. It's still it's still a case and it's still a reason and an explanation for why things haven't gone perfectly. But I think that everybody's kind of hopefully starting to move past that and just around the program think about okay, we know we're young, but how do we actually finish these games off? How do we get better? And uh, I don't know if there's one explanation for it. I think it's a bunch of little things that need to get better. I think it would be sort of the easy way out just to just to talk about the fact that there's 6 and 16 and just sort of pinpoint one little element, one little talking point as the reason for that. That's not really fair, I think, to a smart fan base. And let's be real about it. Sienna right now, 2-7 in conference. You touched on that 6-16 six and 16 record. They lose to Monmouth, who for the past few years, has been the talk of the conference, whether it be the bench mob or whatever it be, just them winning games. But I look at the standings and I wonder, I see Canisius and I see Reiner, but do we really have a dominant top team in the MAC, even though we've reached late January? It's The easy answer is no. I mean, I don't think there's one yet because Canisius is the first-place team. They've gone 7-1 and one so far, and that one loss is against Siena this team that's in last right. place right now and that shows the talent that Siena has and it shows that there is some parity in the conference this year I think that's what we always thought I think you're going to go into the conference tournament this year and anybody literally in the field can win it I, I really feel that way I think I mean we'll see how it develops I haven't seen every team play yet but I think if last year there was a, maybe a group in the middle of the pack in, in, you know, in which Siena was involved that had a shot and it certainly proved that as the four seed. They came as close as they could last year. I, I think that expands, guys, this year as you get into the conference tournament. Now, I, I just believe that there, it, it's going to be a case of almost any team in the field can can win it. There's nothing against those teams that are at the top of the standings. I think that Canisius proved by going on the road and beating Iona in their last game that they're legit. They're not going away. Ryder has like 10 guys, I feel like, in double-figure scoring this year. They they have a lot of weapons all of a sudden on their team. So I don't think they're going anywhere either. But as far as one dominant team that's, that's especially that's actually been there before and done it, I mean, no, because the perennial powers lately, you know, you look at Monmouth, it's been a down year so far this year. 
Uh, you know, it was Manhattan's league for a few years. They were picked second this year, but they've kind of been in the middle of the pack so far. You know, Ione is lingering near the top like they always do, and then the end is coming off a runner-up finish, and, and they're struggling right now. So as far as the, the teams, the names, brand teams that you're used to hearing about, most of those teams aren't quite towards the top of the conference, and, and the teams that are, they just haven't really been there and done that before with, with, with their cores of players. I don't think I'm going to ask you this question a lot many more times because we haven't talked to you since it's happened, but the question has to be asked at least now. Nico Clareth no longer part of the Siena Saints basketball program. Has there been a moment, a game, a situation where you're sitting there courtside and you're like, boy, if they had Nico for this or they had Nico for this game, maybe things could have been different? Uh, I don't know. I, I guess I just haven't really been thinking about it that way because I think it's almost besides the point. I think it's a valid question. I'm not, I, I don't want to take anything away from the question because, I mean, they came into this year and they were counting on Nico Claire. He was named a captain as soon as the season ended last year, and the, the thought was he was going to lead the team. So I don't want to diminish what, what he was to the team at all. That's not what I'm doing here. All I'm going to say is, it, at this point, it's almost besides the point. It's about the group that's left. Whether Nico is here or not, I think everybody knows they need more out of the rest of the guys. I think that part hasn't really changed. It, it, I don't think too much would be different if Nico was still on the team. Uh, and, and again, that's nothing against him. That's just that's a statement about where the team is right now as an entire rest of the the group. There's been plenty of promising signs. I know you guys had Jordan Horn on today, and I think Jordan has proven that. I mean, if, if he's doing what he's been doing lately as a freshman. I think he can go on to really great things as he gets older. And, you know, Prince Aduro uh, clearly has the talent that they thought he did when they recruited him to the program. Roman Penn, you know, lately has gotten a little bit tired, I think, and a little bit worn down as a freshman. But overall, the guy, you know, fights his butt off, and he had 10 rebounds last night on the road at Monmouth, and he's 5'10", five 5'11". Foot five foot so I think he's, he's a real core player. There, there is real talent on the team. Uh, and I just think the team as a whole, they need to figure out what they do best and how to work together. And that's, they, they, had, they had to do that with Nico, and they never really did. And now they have to do it without him. AJ Cannell with us right now, voice of CNN men's basketball. Uh, AJ, like, there's, there's part of me that looks at this team, and like, they're the sixth or seventh least experienced team in all of college basketball. Is there a point where we look at each other as, as fans and, and somebody you know who watches the game all the time and go, are we just expecting too much from such a young team? Yeah, I mean, that's a really fair question as well. I mean, they were, they were picked. I mean, I don't know how much people, how much stock anybody wants to put into the preseason stuff. But, I mean, if you looked at the coaches' preseason poll, they were given a middle-of-the-pack spot, a number six spot. So there were those expectations uh, from, like, the people who actually project this stuff preseason. And then I think the fans were, were certainly hoping they would be better than where they're at uh, right now. But I think that's part of it. I, I, yeah, I mean, if you're going to be, like, a top 10 least experienced team of the 351 teams in the nation, uh, I think it's only natural to expect you're going to be in the in the, at least the bottom third of, of the teams in the country overall. And that's certainly where Sienna is right now. But... It's also a testament to the guys, the confidence in the recruits they brought in, that there were some elevated expectations. And there's just the, the expectations with Siena basketball and what that means to this community. It's always going to be high, almost no matter who the, the names are, you know, on on the jerseys. There's a certain expectation with this team. The coaches understand that, the players understand that, and I understand that uh, as a broadcaster coming in, but. Yeah, and we and we all thought. I think everybody thought. You, you guys talked to me around the start of conference play. You know, I was hopeful that there'd be a couple more wins in the board right now in the conference than, than what we've seen. I, I didn't really expect it to quite be like this at two and seven right now. But I was pondering that same question in my head earlier today, and I, I guess at this point we all have to just readjust our expectations this year. I don't think anybody wants to do that, but it's something everybody's going to have to do that roots for Siena because that's. That's where the team is at right now. 
AJ Cannell, the voice of CNN Men's Hoops. Uh, AJ, we're gonna we're taking off for a week to Minnesota. I believe the next time we're gonna get a chance to talk to you uh, would would probably be like an Iona game or something in that neighborhood. And, uh, we look forward to when that happens, and hopefully we're talking about a whole lot more success and victories by that time. Yeah, I'm hoping it's a different conversation, guys, by that point. So uh, it's always good to catch up with you. All right, AJ. Thanks, man. Good travels, and uh, keep uh, making great calls. We appreciate you. Yep. Uh, AJ Cannell right there, and then uh, man, I just uh, there's part of me that just I, when I see these kids, when I, when we talk to you know to, to Horn and we talk to Herder, it's like they're young, but they look they they just look seasoned the way they talk, the way they answer questions. Yeah, they really do, and that's the thing. Like when you're dealing with freshmen and sophomores, if you've been lucky enough and talented enough to play Division One basketball, there's probably a, not a lot of teams. That throughout your life, whether it be high school, AAU, rec ball, where you're struggling, like you're the best player, and right. everybody wants to play with the best player in that area, wherever it's from, whether it's from Minnesota, whether it's in the capital region. So to see maybe for the first time in a lot of these players' lives, them not have success, they could get discouraged so quickly. It'd be so easy. Whoa, what's going Blame on? Blame somebody else, right. any of that, yeah. Like you, don't want to, you want the season to end. How many times have you been in a job that's not been great for your career and you want it to be over? How many times every, have you been on a team? Every day. How many times have you been on a team where you want the season end? Yes, It could definitely. be so easy for the Siena players to do that, but we saw their attitudes. There was, like, something in their eyes where, like, guys, we got seven weeks to go, man. Like, we got a lot of basketball still left to be played. We're not going to cancel the season because we're not doing great on January 26th. It is LeVac and Goss. We are live from the uh, the ARC gym right here on the Siena campus, and uh, we got our Golick and Wingo Rewind coming up. And Howie Long, he's pretty pumped about what's going on with Raider Nation. Coming up next.